I'm Dan. And I'm Chaz. This is the Wine and Series Business Show, episode 74. Uh, we're doing a Pinot show today. Pretty exciting, but we're doing budget Pinots, right around $15, all 2009. And these should be ones that see some distribution. Um, reading online, I know that the Bruno here, the first wine that we'll taste, is kind of all to Oregon. I don't know about the, uh, the Gracau, but the Red Door I know has pretty wide distribution based on their uh, company. So, yeah, we have... Do you want to talk? What? I, I don't know. I completely lost my train of thought. Okay. All right. Well, tell us about Bruno. Tell us about Bruno. Why yeah. So let's talk. Let's talk about the first wine. Um, yeah. let me cut out that whole bit. Okay. Let's talk about the first wine. The first wine is the 2009 Bruno Willamette Valley Pinot Noir. Uh, it's made by Evesham Wood for their uh, distributor Casa Bruno. Uh, right around fifteen dollars. We had it on the show. The 2008 on the show. I wasn't a huge fan of it. No. Dan, Dan didn't mind it. Um, but I really respect this producer, Ed Sham Wood consistently knocks it out of the park, and uh, really interested to see how this wine came on. So Yeah, yeah, cool stuff. And 2009 has been a real uh, friendly year right out of the bottom, like stuff drinking good, right where a lot of the early releases are ready to go. So Yeah, this is 13% alcohol, pretty low for uh, 14, for 2009. And the color is super light, Yeah, right? Very, like this, very clear. You talk about red tea notes sometimes, but this almost has the look of some like hibiscus tea or something. Absolutely. It smells really friendly. It's, yeah, it's raspberries, some dark strawberries. Yeah, really, really uh, friendly red red berries. It's getting just a little bit of oak, but it's really light. That's just friendly and fruity on the nose. Yeah, like jazz. Dan's a dick. Wow, strawberries totally on the palate. Big time. Bright, good acidity. That's really good. I mean, it's not complex or, or else, I mean, that uh, amazing in any, any sense, but it's like really, really easy. Goes across the palate really smooth. Juicy. And lots of juicy fruit, yeah. Um, but not like big or oh, not going to knock your tongue out of the. I can't even talk tonight. I, I ran, I just ran 13 miles and I'm tired as shit. So, too, right? Yeah, so this show is probably going to be me stuttering and fumbling my words multiple times, so I apologize ahead of time. But it's not too bad. Yeah, not too bad. Really nice fruit on this. Simple, delicious Pinot Noir. Why are you running so much? Training? Yeah, We've got a, a 50k run around Hag Lake, doing two laps of Hag Lake uh, here in late February. That's so, so I ran 13 miles today and tomorrow I'm going to try to do. I gotta make it 30, so I gotta try to run 17 miles tomorrow. 30 so. in two days? Yeah. Yep. Wow. The strawberry fruit persists on the palate, and it's, it's just like clean and juicy and easy to drink. I'm getting a bit of a green note that throws me off late on the palate. Not really disruptive, but it but it takes away a little bit from the from the juicy goodness for me. Mm -hmm. um, takes it down to 85 points at the price point. It's just fine, and uh, yeah, pretty tasty. Yeah, I think I threw the previous vintage of this under the bus, but I mean, this is, Dan's uh, correct in his score. I'm going to go 85 points on it, too. Uh, it's simple, it's delicious, and uh, at the price point, uh, worth checking out. So, recommended. So, uh, wine number two here, we've got Grokow Cellars. I'm not sure how to pronounce that. I'm sorry. You can, you can If you see this, you can correct us under, underneath. Um, with the Commuter Cuvée. 2009 again? Yeah, 2009, Willamette Valley Pinot Noir. This is a wine I've actually kind of wanted to try for a while because the, the winemaker has been uh, kind of active on wine berserkers and, and some other, you know, form, form stuff here and there. So, noticed his name, haven't tried much of his wine before, so I'd like, like to check some of the new stuff out. I've seen his stuff around, but this will be the first time I've ever had his wine, so... So there's a nice write-up on him, I think. He makes his wine out of uh, Northwest Portland in, in the city. He's been at it since 2002. Yeah, 2002. Yeah. Previously a sommelier at Higgins cool. restaurant. Um, been at it for a while, so I can respect that. So so the label here, Community Cafe, has got a bike on the front. Apparently it was dedicated to Portland bike culture. And uh, also it says on the back that a portion of the proceeds um, from the sale go to the uh, Brett Jerome... <laughs> It's wow, a, that's a hard one. Jerolamec Memorial yep. Fund to help promote bike safety in the city. We'll put a link for that down uh, down below after the show. But yes. that's cool of him. And especially to take money off the top of what's already a very reasonably priced bottle. That's 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 pretty honorable. So very thanks. honorable. Thank you. 
Definitely more complexity on the nose right yeah, away. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, tending towards darker fruit. The green, yeah. Maybe would guess 08 blind on this even? I don't know. A little bit of like spiciness too, like some sort of cooking spice going on there. You know, like plums, both with the skins and the, and the plum fruit on there. And cherries, I mean, I've... Uh, just a touch of black tea, right? Just a little bit of tans going on, but... Uh, but that one's kind of nice at this price point, actually. It really smells, nice. Yeah, it smells really nice. Yeah. Kind of a bright, fresh note right when it hits the palate. Wow. A little bit of fruit evolution. It's, it's pretty yeah. cool. Nice weight on the palate and the, mm -hmm. the way that it... Uh, the finish leaves the tongue and leaves... A, there's a, a decent finish on this wine. Yeah, it's really good. Yeah. So, so I guess I can't talk. You're doing fine. You're doing fine. <laughs> Getting like bright raspberries right when it starts out, and the plum flavors come in a little bit later. So you got right a little bit of fruit complexity. It's lingering nicely on the palate yeah. too. The acidity is gentle, um, but it but it hangs on, making the mouth water a little bit. Both of the fruits are still around. Again, not overly powerful. Not not a whole lot of like you know knock your socks off flavors kind of going on. But it's really well put together. Yeah. And at fourteen one alcohol, not even a hint of that noticeable. Fruit stands up really, really well with the rest of the structure. It's a nice wine. Really nice. 88 points for me. I like it a lot. 88 plus? Yeah, I like that it too. It's really good. And, and, and at sub 20, I'm, I'm really yeah. impressed. For at those $15, completely recommended. Yeah, for those of you out there who, you know, who are poking around trying to introduce yourself to Oregon Pinot, or are looking for something just reasonably priced that you can drink more regularly, this is, yeah, this is definitely yeah. worth checking out. Wine yeah, that, was, that was a good wine. We right. go from the uh, lone guy making a little bit of wine in a little warehouse to, uh, to the big company. Yeah. So Red Door Cellars is a part of a uh, larger company that makes many, many different labels. Shingleback in Australia is under theirs. Uh, House Wine. Oh, the seriously? Beer. Yeah, it's under them as well. Um, I'm nervous. And they, they, they would, going through their website was kind of interesting to see that they have like two or three different labels of a producer like like Red Dover makes Pinot Gris or Pinot Gris and Pinot Noir, and then there was two other ones like Saka and another one, I'm trying to, something bicycle I don't know, or no okay. Blue Pirate Blue Pirate that's was the other oh, one. Crazy. That was Pinot Gris and Pinot Noir. And as Oregon well. designate? Well, Oregon Oregon or Willamette Valley designate. Crazy. Yeah. Strange. So. So those of you who are experts, those of you in the business out there, why does a company do that? Is that just a marketing move to kind of like well, catch more shares in the supermarket? Or is it like you get fruits in different lots and have some of it made here, have some of it made there, and you label it differently? I don't know what the story behind that would be. And it, and it sounds a little fishy, right? It makes, it makes me even a little nervous. But it's good. Sure. Yeah, this is good. Oh. Splish splash. Sweet. This is the last one. So, uh, And when I was first getting into Pinot Noir, I remember buying a bottle of this and being happy with it. Oh. The 05 or the 06. Interesting. I think it was the 05. And yeah, I was, I was happy with it. 06. Ah, but I can't remember. That was many, many glasses of wine ago. Yeah. <laughs> also pretty bright. Before cellar tracker. So. Bright on the nose, but there's not a whole lot coming off of it. There's not a whole lot of uh, fruit going on here. No, it's definitely less less fruity initially. It doesn't jump out of the glass like the first two. The first two are very pungent. Uh, this is a little more subdued. I even get like little lines along with the cherries, but it's really light. You gotta kind of gotta work for it. Yeah, cherries and some sort of citrus note. Sniffing. Yeah. Doesn't yeah. smell bad. It smells oh. kind of good. Yeah. Nice enough. Yeah. yeah. Starts out nice, clean on the palate. Stays clean through. The oak influence is definitely more visible than the previous two wines, but it's not heavy. I wouldn't mm -hmm. characterize it heavy by any stretch. Hmm. And turns a little more tower, or a little more wow, sour or tart on the finish than the previous two. This, the acidity here sure. is definitely on the. Uh, I don't know what, this, what sort of flavor to go with this. It's just tart. Um, sure. But I, not in a bad way. Yeah, I go with a little white limes against some cherries, maybe a little hibiscus. Definitely the flavors are lighter and uh, maybe, maybe a little weaker than the previous two. Leads me to believe that that you know maybe maybe it was. Uh, you know, high high volume in the vineyards, 
or whatever, like it wasn't cropped as low, the fruit's not as concentrated. Um, but the flavor is still good. Yeah. It's, it's, it's pretty well balanced. It's a good way to put it. It's, 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 it's a very well balanced wine, but that said, it's just kind of low intensity almost all the way across the board. That way it does, it does have a better body than the, the Bruno. I'll, I'll agree. Yeah. It's yeah. a little thicker of a wine. A little on, bit on of the palate. Yeah. That's, that's yeah. working all right. True, true. Another tough one to score. Um, not tremendously interesting, but you know, it's nice wine. I'm going to go. 85 points again on this one. Yep, same thing. Yeah. It's, 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 yeah. It's, so this is a show where we... Nah, really 80, 85 yeah. minutes. I, given the choice, I would drink this first. Mm. Not by a whole lot, but, uh, but, but I like it a little better. And nothing wrong here. I'm suspicious that this is distributed very widely. Yeah. Although I wouldn't, you know, I say with something I like... I'll give 84 points on that. If you want to check out... Yeah, you know, given, given that decision, yeah, I would much rather have the Bruno over this, so... And this really sticks in my mind, you know, with, with stuff that's, that's cheaper like this, a lot of times I find myself saying, if you want to try out Oregon wine, this is a great way to get started. I don't know if this represents a whole lot of, like, Oregon characteristics to me that it I think, really. you know, strike me as interesting and definitely worth checking out, so... You know, Whereas I'll, these two are definitively Oregon. Yeah. This one is not so much. It's just kind of a fruity Pinot Noir that could be from California or Oregon or some other place in the world. Yeah, but still an enjoyable drink that's probably fairly easy to find. Straight to the point, we've got some good Oregon shows under our belt. We're lining up a couple of non-Oregon shows again, but we should have some great guests. Hopefully enjoyed the interview. Hopefully enjoy the, the guests to come. Hopefully have a great day. Um, oh, question. we got to ask a question of the day. Yeah, question of the day. So we were talking about uh, nerd stuff. Yeah, computers, and I still, I, how do I, I don't even know how to talk about it. Doug, I'm, 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 that's, that's how bad, that's how bad it is today for me, like, yeah, you're, you're not even drunk, drunk, are you? No, it's crazy. I haven't had anything to drink. That's wow. probably what, probably what the problem is. Maybe I have had anything to drink. Made you pound half a bottle of water before you can somebody drink Stammering over drink. myself. Oh, that'd be the Bruno. <laughs> yeah. It'd be a joke. <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, we had to do the question of the day. Yeah. Um, so we were talking about this earlier. Both you computer guys. Hopefully, you know, we, we know some of the people that, that watch us are, are, you know, kind of internet nerds. We're talking about internet radio. Chaz discovered one of my favorite bands through Pandora. That was one of your favorite bands? No, seriously. I've been I've been into them for years. Wow. Man, yeah. I have no idea. Um, but but he, he, like, posted a link, you know, a, 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 some of the lyrics on Facebook. And I was like, whoa, that's amazing. I've never heard you talk about them. They're great. Um, and the Blow is the name of the band. They're playing in town in a couple of weeks. Looking forward to seeing them live. But it got us into a discussion of internet radios, how much we've enjoyed Pandora. But we also know some people that love to hate on it. So uh, that leads us to our question of the day. What internet radio station are you fond of and why? I want to know. Yeah. All right, thanks, guys. Thanks for watching. So we'll see you next time.